Now, another kind of an image or graphic that you can use in PowerPoint, other than images from your computer or clip art in the Microsoft Clip Art Library, are something called smart art graphics. And these are usually charts or diagrams of various kinds that you can insert into your PowerPoint presentation. So let's go ahead and click on them, and you're going to see that I get this, these options. And you're going to see the different categories of smart art graphics over here, and then the individual smart art graphics are listed here. So, for example, if I was looking for an organization chart, I could go ahead and click on hierarchy there. And here are a variety of different org chart styles. I'm going to go ahead and select this style right here, and you're going to see the preview that I get of it. And you can do that for each of these different styles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this one right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there is my smart art graphic. Now, you're going to see there's a frame around this graphic, like the picture that we worked with or the table that we worked with. So again, you can use this border to move the smart art graphic anywhere you want on the slide, or to stretch and resize the amount of space that's given. Just like that. I also have this little guy right over here. We didn't see that when we were looking with tables. If I click on that, you're going to see that I get a text outline of this smart art graphic. And I can simply highlight and click on any one of them and change the text. So I can go ahead and type a name Timothy there. And then I can go ahead and type a name there. And I just keep typing names in. And you're going to see that it highlights the box on the org chart where I'm actually editing. Go ahead and type John, so on and so forth. Now, if that's a little slow for you, you can always close that and just simply click on the boxes. And that's as simple as it is to use smart art graphics inside of PowerPoint. And again, when I click over here, you're going to see that it automatically filled those values in. But I could also type the information into the individual cells. Now, whoops, double click there. When you have a smart art graphic selected, you're going to see you get the smart art tools right up here. And this is definitely something that you should look at. We have different layout styles here. And again, if I click that drop down, you'll see the different layout styles. So I could actually convert what I've got into something different. So I'm not stuck with just that one style. Once I find one that I like, I just simply click on it. I'll go ahead and click on, um, let's see, let's do this one right there. So that definitely looks a little bit different. And again, you can simply highlight and change whatever you want here. I've got change colors right here. And if I click that, it'll allow me to choose a different theme set for this particular smart art graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and look at some of these here. And I think I'm going to use that one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Doesn't need to be quite that big. So there I go, and I'm moving on over. I've adjusted my org chart. Now, again, definitely go in here and explore the different layouts. And you can also come in here and explore the different styles. The styles affect the box itself. You're going to see right now, I just have a simple fill on these boxes. But if I highlight, or if I hover over, or click on any of these others, you're going to see that I get some different styles. If I click the drop down arrow here, I'll get all the different styles. And there's no accounting for taste here. I wouldn't use any of these right here. They don't appear very good or read very well. But these simple items right up here, Maybe just what you're looking for. 
And I'm going to go ahead and click that style right there. And that's the way my smart art graphic is going to look. So lots of things to explore here on the um, design tab. One last item, I have reset graphic. If I click on reset graphic, it's going to restore it back to whatever the defaults were. So now I can come in here and make some changes perhaps to the uh, color scheme. Click that and I'm back. So reset graphic can also be very helpful. Convert that's over here, you can convert this to text or you can convert them to shape, shapes as images. But again, there's not a lot of usefulness um, for that option there. Now we also have a format tab here and this will format your different um, boxes. Now, unfortunately, again, most of these options don't look too terribly great. A lot of times they make things look just really kind of gaudy. But you can go in and explore some of these different options um, if you want. What you can also do is you can change the fill, outline, and add an individual effect to a box. So for example, let's say I want Susan's box to appear a little different. I can come here to Shape Fill, and I can put a background color on her, and I can come to Shape Effects and maybe put a shadow on her box. And you'll see these perspective shadows as well. I'm going to go ahead and select this one here, and you'll see the way Susan's box has changed. So you can use this, whoops, you can use this format tab to get to these options right here and also to work with some of these predefined styles. If you've got multiple images, multiple smart art graphics, you may also need to control the layering, which is where bring to forward and send the back will come in useful um, for you.